In this video, we're going to continue our work with quadratic equations and look at completing the square. We're going to consider the form x plus a all squared plus b and a multiplied by x plus b all squared plus c. So this now gives us the completed square form. We can use completing the square to solve equations that won't factor and also to draw quadratic curves. So this gives us a lot more information about the curve we have. In this video, we're going to look at factoring expressions and solving equations. And then in the next video, we're going to look at graphing from the completed square form. So in question six, we're asked to write the following quadratic expressions in the form x plus a all squared plus b. So this is the form x plus a all squared plus b. We would use this now when the coefficient of the term in x squared is 1. We can only complete the square when we have now a coefficient of x squared that's 1. If not, we need to factor it out. So, for example, if we had 3x squared, we would factor the 3 out. If we had negative x squared, we would factor the negative out. So, let's start off. What we need to do is make sure these are in the form ax squared plus bx plus c x squared x no x we saw that in the previous video what we do is open a bracket and we will square that bracket i put an x in the front and then i consider this term in x we take half the coefficient including its sign of the term in x that's going to give me minus two when we do this now, we square this number right here and subtract it away. That's going to give me negative 4. And then we reintroduce the negative 3. So in completed square form, this would be x minus 2 all squared minus 7. So we would have a is equal to negative 2 and b is equal to negative 7. It's one of those skills that if you can comfortably get used to, it's really quite straightforward. Let's now look at the next one. We're going to have to rearrange this. x squared minus 6x plus 2. ax squared plus bx plus c. I set up the bracket, which I'm going to square. I have an x in it. I need half the coefficient of the term in x with its sign. Well, that's going to be negative 3. We now need to subtract away negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is going to give me positive 9. I subtract that away. And then, of course, I add back the 2 that I've got. So we're going to have now x minus 3, all squared. Then we're going to have minus 7. Uh, simply a coincidence that we've got a negative 7 again. It's just the particular question. OK, let's look at the next one. x squared plus 5x plus 2. It's in the correct order. What we're going to have is x in the bracket. We will square it. Now we need to consider what's going in. We need half of the coefficient of the term in x with its sign. Don't be tempted here to write this as a decimal. Simply write it as a fraction. So if I divide 5 by 2, half of 5 is 5 over 2. I need to square this number and subtract it away. Squaring 5 over 2 is going to give me 25 over 4. And then, of course, at this stage, I'm going to reintroduce the 2, so plus the 2. So we're going to have x plus 5 over 2, all squared. This is going to give me now, if we change this up into quarters, this is going to give me 8 over 4. So if I think about this now, uh, 2 is going to give me 8 quarters. So just if you want to write this as 8 over 4, you're perfectly welcome to do that. So we've got minus 25 over 4 plus the 8 over 4, which will give us now the negative. So minus 17 over 4. So that's in completed square form. A is 5 over 2. B is negative 17 over 4. It won't always be negative. We might have a positive on the end. And in the same way, this sign can also change. If we look at this one, we've not got a C term. So all we need to do, set up the bracket, which we will square. X goes in. We need half a coefficient. So that's going to be 3 over 2. 
we square this number and subtract it. So that will be now minus 9 over 4. So that's what we end up with. Nice and straightforward, completed square form when we don't have a constant. If I wanted to graph this now and say that y was equal to this particular expression right here, this gives us a lot of information now about what we call the uh, vertex and the axis of symmetry. And as stated in the next video, we will look at graphing from this. Let's just do another couple. Let's say we've got x squared plus, and then we'll go for uh, 8x, and then we're going to have plus, and we will have 21. So it's in the correct form. So it's x plus 4. We need to square that, subtract away 4 squared, and add the 21. x plus 4, all squared, plus 5. So that's what we end up with. Just out of interest, the vertex of this particular graph would be at negative 4, 5. And that is the advantage, because all we're doing is essentially considering graph transformations. So there we go. Let's look at some others. So that's question 6. In this one, we're asked to solve the following quadratic equations by completing the square, leaving our answers in exact form where appropriate. OK, so... What we're going to do here is start x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. So I'm going to have now the bracket, which I'm going to square. x is going in. Half of this value right here is going to be minus 1. I need to square this number and subtract it, which is going to be minus 1. And then I've got now the minus 8, and that's equal to 0. Adding the 1 and the 8 to both sides, x minus 1, all squared, is equal to 9. At this stage, I simply square root both sides of the equation. So x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. So that's going to give me plus or minus 3. All we need to do now is add the 1 to both sides. So it's 1 plus or minus 3. Now, 1 plus 3, that's going to give us that x is equal to 4. 1 minus 3, that's going to give us that x is equal to negative 2. So they are the solutions by completing the square to solve. If we just look at this, this actually does factor. This would factor to x minus 4, and then we'd have x plus 2 is equal to 0. We saw in the last video that if x minus 4 is equal to 0, x is 4. If x plus 2 is equal to 0, x is negative 2. So that first one gives us a confidence boost that what we're doing is correct. OK, let's look at the next one. When we're talking about exact form, that means in the form of a third. And hopefully we will see that very shortly. So we've got x squared plus 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. So completing the square, we're going to have now our bracket we're going to have x plus 3 over 2. We need to subtract this, which is 9 over 4. Now I've got this plus 1. Now you might, you don't have to, but you might want to write this now as plus 4 over 4, and that's equal to 0. To begin with, some people might have already subtracted 1 from both sides before completing the square. It's entirely up to you. So x plus 3 over 2, that is our square term, and that's going to be equal to adding the 9 over 4 and subtracting the 4 over 4, that will be equal to 5 over 4. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So x plus 3 over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 over 4. Now, if we just consider the square root of 5 over 4 is the same as the square root of 5 over the square root of 4, which is 2. So this is going to give me a plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. I'm now going to subtract the 3 over 2 from both sides. So x is equal to negative 3 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. So x is going to be equal to negative 3 plus or minus root 5 over 2. 
and that would be perfectly fine to leave like so. I simply combined the fraction. So it's going to be negative 3 plus root 5 over 2 or negative 3 minus root 5 over 2. So we've solved a quadratic equation by completing the square that didn't factor. There are not uh, any two numbers that multiply to give 1 and add to give 3. Okay, let's do the next one. So I, I've left those in exact form. Exact form simply means it's in a third form. So let's just do this one. Now, I don't have to take the, uh, the 12 uh, to the left-hand side and set it to 0 because ultimately I'm going to take now uh, the value over to the right-hand side. So if we just leave this one, x squared plus 8x is equal to 12 and complete the square just here, we're going to have on here now x plus half the coefficient, which is going to be 4. We square the bracket. We subtract away the 4 squared, which is 16, and that's equal to 12. x plus 4, all squared, will be equal to 12 plus 16, which is going to be 28. We take the square root of both sides. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 28. If you want to think about this now, the square root of 28 is the square root of 4 times by 7, which is going to give us a simplified third of root uh, 2 root 7. So x plus 4 is equal to now plus or minus 2 root 7. Subtracting 4, x is going to be equal to negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 7. And that gives us now the two solutions. Negative 4 plus root 20, uh, 2 root 7 and negative 4 minus 2 root 7. Um, that's given in exact form. You might get away with root 28, but generally speaking, we would be asked for it in uh, its simplest terms. OK, let's look at the next one. When we complete the square, we must ensure that the coefficient of term in x squared is 1. We can't have 2, we can't have 5, we can't have negative 3, we can't have a quarter. So, because we are only solving this one, we're not leaving it in the form a, uh, a x plus b or squared plus c. I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 2. That's going to give me x squared plus 7 over 2x minus 1 half is equal to 0. All I've done is divided by 2. And now I'm going to complete the square on here. So x plus... Half of 7 over 2 is going to be 7 over 4. We're dividing this by 2. We square the bracket and we subtract away 49 over 16. That's 7 over 4 squared. Okay, I've got now this value right here, which is minus 1 half. And I could, if I wanted, write that as 8 over 16. You really, uh, you really don't have to, but you can do if you want. So x plus 7 over 4, all squared, will be equal to, this is going to give me now uh, 57 over 16. We need to be fairly good with our basic mental math skills uh, because these generally in this particular unit won't be calculator questions. So x plus 7 over 4 will be equal to plus or minus the square root of 57. 7. Uh, what's 57? 3 times by 19. So that's not going to break down. So 57 over the square root of 16, which is going to be 4. We should expect to see these two numbers the same. So x is going to be equal to subtracting 7 fourths from both sides. Negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 57 all over 4. So two solutions. Negative 7 plus root 57 over 4 and negative 7 minus root 57 over 4. As stated, to begin with, these are quite bewildering, but with enough practice and with time, they should become um, a routine procedure. Okay, this is question number 8. We need to write the following quadratic expressions in the form a multiplied by x plus b or squared plus c. So with these ones, we have now where the coefficient of the term in x squared is not positive 1. What we need to do is factor that out. So let's look at the first one. 
I'm just going to consider, and I'll just write this in, 2x squared plus 4x, and then I'm going to just put the plus 7 here. We only need to consider factoring this part. So common factor here is going to be the 2. So we take that out. That's going to give me x squared plus 2x. And then, of course, we've got the 7. We can just leave that out there. Now that I've got this quadratic expression in the square brackets, I can complete the square on x squared plus 2x. So that's what I'm going to do. So completing the square inside the brackets, I'm going to have x plus 1, all squared, minus 1. And then, of course, we close the bracket off and we've got the plus 7 on the end. We multiply through, so we've got 2x plus 1, all squared, minus 2 plus 7. Minus 2 plus 7 is going to give me now the 5, so 2x plus 1, all squared, plus 5. And that is in the form a, x plus b all squared plus c. a is 2, b is positive 1, c is positive 5. I've taken the 2 out, I've completed the squares before, I've multiplied back through by the 2 and collected the terms up. Okay, let's do the next one. Now this one you might say, well it is 1x squared, it's negative 1. So what I'm going to do is take the negative out and all that means doing is having now x squared minus 5x close off the brackets and leave the negative 2 out there. So I've taken the negative 1 out. We can only complete the square. The coefficient of a term in x squared is 1. So let's complete the square inside the brackets. x minus 5 over 2. We need to square the bracket. I'm now going to subtract away this number squared. 25 over 4. So 5 squared is 25. 2 squared is 4. Close the bracket, and then we'll have now the minus 2. What we're going to do at this stage is multiply through back by the negative 1. So I'm just going to multiply back, and then we can write this in. So what we'll have is negative x minus 5 over 2, all squared, plus, we've got a negative and a negative, that's plus 25 over 4, and then we've got the minus 2 on here, which I'm going to write as now minus, and that will be 8 over 4. So we can write this as negative x minus 5 over 2, all squared, plus now 17 over 4. And that is in the form that we want. So nice and straightforward, nice and steady, just take your time with them. OK, let's uh, do the next one. We've got on here now 7x squared plus 3x plus 1. So what I'm going to do is write this out. 7x squared plus 3x plus 1. It's in the correct form. x squared plus bx plus c. I need to take out the factor of 7. That's going to leave me x squared plus 3 over 7x. And then we're going to have the plus 1. I need to complete the square inside the brackets and then I'll reintroduce the 7 by multiplying through. x plus half of seven, 3 over 7, which is going to be plus 3 over 14. We need to square the bracket, subtract away 9 over 196, close the bracket off and add now for 1. So, what I'm going to end up with now, when I multiply back through, is with the 7, we're just going to multiply by the 7. We'll have now 7 multiplied, so 7 multiplied by x plus 3 over 14, all squared. Now, I need to multiply 7 um, by 9 over 196. Uh, 7 goes into 196, so that's going to be now subtract 9, and then we're going to have over 28. 7 multiplied by this fraction should give me this, plus now we've got 1. Now we could write this as 28 over 28, just to make our life slightly easier. So we could write this as 7 multiplied by x plus 3 over 14, all squared. 
and then at this particular stage we're going to have now uh, 28 minus 9 which is going to be 19 so that's going to be plus 19 over 28 and that is in the form a x plus b all squared plus c a is 7 b is 3 14 and c is 19 28 if you want to use a calculator uh, for the first few feel free to do so Right, let's do this last one. Uh, we need to rewrite this first as 5x squared plus 8x, ax squared plus bx plus c. And in this case, c is going to be 0. So what I need to do is take out the 5. That's going to leave me x squared plus 8 over 5x. So we need to complete the square inside here. I need half of 8 over 5, which is going to be, now if I have half of 8 over 5, we're going to end up now with 4 over 5, so let's put that in. So we'll have now x, I'm just writing this in, x plus 4 over 5, we need to square the bracket and subtract away 16 25ths. Got no constant to worry about, so multiplying back through x plus uh, 4 fifths, all squared, we multiply that by the 5, minus 16, or 5 over 25 is going to give me 1 over 5. So that is what we have. A is 5, B is positive 4 fifths, C is negative 16 over 5. So these are expressions. They're expressions because they're not set equal to anything. So let's move on and look at solving. So question nine, solve the following quadratic equations by completing the square, leaving your answer in exact form where appropriate. So we've got to go ahead, complete the square and write them in terms of thirds. When we have this scenario, three x squared plus six x minus one is equal to zero, all I'm gonna do at this stage is divide the whole equation by three. That's the term in front of x squared. I don't need to put it in the form a, x plus b or squared plus c. A lot more work. So I'm just going to simply write this as x squared plus 2x minus 1 third is equal to 0. At this stage, I'm going to complete the square. We've got now a coefficient of 1. We can only complete the square if the coefficient is 1. So x plus 1 all squared minus 1 minus 1 third and that's equal to 0. So x plus 1, all squared. I'm now going to add these two to the other side. So I've got 3 thirds and 1 third, which is going to be 4 thirds. Now I need to take the square root of both sides. So x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 over 3. Now we can write this. Square root of 4 is going to be 2. Square root of 3 is going to be root 3. I would be expected to rationalize this. So all I'm going to do is subtract 1 from both sides and rationalize the denominator of this fraction. So it'll be negative 1. Then we're going to have now plus or minus. We'll have 2 root 3 over 3. And that's now rationalized. So if you do want to check these, what we can do is use a calculator and the quadratic equation to back that up. So let's just grab the calculator. Right, calculator. So what we've got here now, if we wanted, uh, we've got this in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. The quadratic equation we could write now, if we want the solutions to the quadratic equation, x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we've got here that a is equal to 3, b is equal to positive 6, c is equal to negative 1. So I'm just going to substitute these in. So what we'll have then is negative, let's just, there we go, that's what I want, negative 6 plus the square root of uh, 6 squared, which is 36, minus 4 times by a, which is going to be 3, times by c, which is going to be negative 1, and that's all over now, 2 lots of a, 2 lots of a is going to be 6. So we can see on here that what it's given me is exactly what we've got here. It's just combined the fraction. It's just put this as negative 3 over 3. And of course, if we swap that over, then we would get the negative value just here. So exactly the same. All we've done is just combine the fraction. So we can see our answer is right. Okay, let's look at the next one. 7x squared plus 5x minus 2 is equal to 0. It is in the correct form. So at this stage, I'm going to divide through by 7. So x squared plus 5 
over 7x minus 2 over 7 is equal to 0. Completing the square, x plus 5 over 14, all squared, minus 25 over 196. And then what's that going to give me? If we switch this up now, if I, I can switch this into the same fraction. So what's 7 going to 196? 7 goes into 196, 28 times 2 times 28 is 4. 56 over 1, uh, 198, and that's equal to 0. So we're going to have x plus 5 over 14 all squared, and that's going to be equal to, what's that going to give me? 81. Uh, that looks like it's going to be 81. So we're going to have 81 over 198. So x plus 5 over 14 is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 81, which is going to be 9 over the square root of, uh, sorry, that should be 196, one, 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 which is going to be 14. Uh, so x is going to be equal to, subtracting the uh, 5 14ths, x is going to be equal to negative 5, and then we've got now plus or minus the 9, over 14. So what's that going to give us? Well, x is going to be equal to, uh, if we do the negative, that's going to be negative 1. If we do the positive, that's going to be now, what have we got? 4 over 14, which is going to be uh, 2 over 7. Um, so that's what we should get. Now, let's, let's just check this. See, if I'm looking at this thinking, well, these are nice answers. This should factor. In that case, it should give me 7x minus 2, um, then multiplied by x plus 1 is equal to 0. If these are the factors which we could have factored it with, uh, let's have a look. 7x squared plus 7x minus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. 7x squared plus 5x minus 2 is equal to 0. So that one does factor. Um, but as we ask the user, the... Uh, quadratic uh, equation by completing the square we're asked to solve then I've completed the square but as you can see the mental maths is quite uh, quite hard to keep on top of especially as I'm, I'm talking through it um, but because I've got these solutions if negative 1 is the solution x plus 1 is a factor if positive 2 sevenths is a solution 7x minus 2 is a factor so I've put them there expanded it out and showing that that works now alternatively you can just substitute in as we saw the last time so if you want to check that these solutions are valid then all you're going to do is simply now uh, get seven lots of the number we're going to put in squared plus uh, plus five lots of the number we want to put in minus two now if we put both of these solutions in that we've just found we should end up now with zero as expected and you can see with the one that's what we're going to get anyway so let's just put in that uh that negative one there we go and then if we put in the fraction uh two sevenths we should again end up with exactly the same so this is what you would use to check it let's put this in two over seven so 2 over 7 again gives us naught. So they are those solutions are valid. Right, let's look at uh, the next one. So this one we need to uh, complete the square. Now this isn't in the correct form, so I'm going to expand it out, collect it all up together, and then complete the square. So what we've got then on, I'm just going to do the left hand side. We've got 4x squared minus 24x. And that's what we get. I'm just thinking of how little I can get away with factoring this. So what I'm going to do at this stage is just set that equal to 7. I'm going to leave the 7 over there. Taking the 4 out, I suppose we could have just multiplied through by the x here. This is going to give me x squared minus for 6x. I think that would have been easier. And that's equal to 7. So I'm now in a position to complete the square because I've taken the 4 out. So if you want, you can just leave the 4 there and multiply through by the x squared. So we're going to get 4, then let's complete the square here, x minus 3, all squared, minus 3, which is going to give us the 9, then we're going to get on here, that's equal to 7. 
Okay, at this stage, I'm going to divide both sides by four. And you might think, well, why are you doing that? Well, the reason being is I'm going to have to do it at some point anyway. So what we've got then is x minus 3 all squared minus 9 is equal to 7 over 4. Adding the 9 to both sides, we've got x minus 3 all squared is going to be equal to, this is going to be the 7 over 4 plus now 36 over 4. So all I've done at that stage is simply added the 9 to both sides and written it as a fraction over 4. So x minus 3 is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root. If we just consider adding these together, it's going to give me 43. So root 43 over 2. And then all I'm going to do is add the 3. So 3 plus or minus the square root of 43 over 2. So if I do this on a calculator, what we're going to see is it's going to give us 6 plus or minus root 43 over 2. So in this particular form, what we've got, if we write this as 4x squared minus 24x minus 7 is equal to 0, using the quadratic equation, A is going to be 4, B is going to be negative 24, and C is going to be negative 7. So let's put this through the quadratic equation. Negative B, so that's going to be 24, plus the square root of negative 24 squared, which is the same as 24 squared, minus 4 times by a which is 4 times by c which is negative 7 all over 2 lots of a which is going to be 14 so let's uh, so 2 lots of a which is going to be 8 let's put that there and that's what we will get so exactly what was expected we've just got now the integer value rather than a, a, um, a combined fraction um, so slightly more challenging but again by this stage it should be one of those things that you just get into and start plugging your way through so that now is what we have. That is completing the square to solve and completing the square to write it in completed square form. In the next video, we will look at graphing quadratic equations, first from factored form, then completed, uh, completed square form, so we can see the benefits of this particular use. So if a quadratic equation doesn't factor, your choices are either completing the square or using the quadratic equation. I actually prefer completing the square to solve, but some people will simply use the quadratic equation. I just think it's nicer to, to complete the square, especially if you've not got a calculator.